Hey everyone, today we're going to look at a demonstration of using OpenShift pipelines and OpenShift shops for performing full uh, shops uh, pipeline experience for an application. In this demo, we'll see how we can use pipelines and GitOps together in terms of having uh, pipelines manage the CI process but still relying on GitOps to do the CD. And we'll look at a couple of different techniques using GitOps to uh, in the integration between the to manage. So I have a basic product catalog application that we'll be using for this demonstration. Nothing too fancy as you can see here. It's really just the uh, a simple web application and it is made up of a three tier uh, architecture in the sense that we've got a Node.js front end, a Java back end written in Quickness, and a database using um, DB. I've got three different environments for that uh, application. So I've got a dev environment, a test environment, and a prod environment. And you'll notice I have a few other uh, namespaces as well, like the GitOps namespace where the GitOps for this demo is running. I have a monitor namespace for uh, monitoring the application, which we won't get into as part of this demo. And then finally, I have a CI CD namespace, which is where we'll go next to look at our uh, pipelines that are available. So we go and look at our pipelines. We can see that <coughs> I've got four different pipelines. And the pipeline that we're going to trigger here is the server pipeline. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just by uh, executing a small code change in my server application. We'll just go in and modify one small file here. And we're just going to do a very simple uh, bumping of the version that I've got in here. It's not going to be anything uh, significant in terms of uh, a version, but uh, it'll be a small change that will trigger the pipeline and we can see how the process goes through. And then we'll watch it uh, actually deploy the application in those different environments. So we'll commit that change. And at this point in time now, we can see that the uh, pipeline is actually being initiated. So this is being triggered by a webhook from a GitHub into our OpenShift pipelines. <coughs> and that is going through the process. So the next thing we'll do is we'll start looking at this pipeline as it goes through. Now this pipeline will take a little while to, uh, to run through, but uh, talk you through it as it's going through the process so uh, we'll see how we do in terms of uh, timing here so the first step that it's doing is uh, it's acquiring a lease so in this pipeline I'm using essentially a mutex system in order to manage concurrent activity in the pipeline I basically only want one instance of this pipeline to be running at a time since I'm updating git in the background when I do the deployments it, it could be easy for different pipelines to kind of stomp on each other as they're trying to interact with Git. So having this mutex makes sure that everything goes through in uh, one at a time and, and gets managed. The mutex will also block any other pipelines from executing. And once this pipeline releases the lease, the next one can start. So there's it'll just make it make sure everything ex executes in a serial fashion. Uh, after that, I've got some uh, information that the pipeline needs that I'm storing in config maps and secrets. So this variables. My task is really just going out and mounting those and then making them available as results that can be used as parameters in subsequent tasks. Uh, the clone step then clones the product catalog server source code that I just changed. It will uh, <coughs> get it ready on a, uh, on a workspace volume, which is then shared uh, amongst the other tasks that will execute after that. The next one, which is quite interesting for me, is the generate ID. This generates a unique uh, build ID. And you can see here my ID is looking like this, which probably doesn't mean too much to you when you look at it. But the key thing to understand is that the first part is the short commit code. And then the second part is a date timestamp that I'm using. And it's a hash date timestamp, so it's not something that's uh, human understandable. The reason why I'm using the commit here is that I'm going to be able to use this tag uh, in order to reference the image that's being deployed and do some comparisons on that. We'll see that later. And the date time is relevant because I may end up doing multiple builds against the same commit because, for example, the base image changes and I want to just rebuild it to take advantage of new patches and features. So that's why we would uh, do that. So once I got the generate ID, then I'm going through and I'm building the source code, just a standard Maven build. Actually, that was quite quick at uh, 27 seconds. Then I'm doing a quality check with Sonar Cube. So this will take that source code and run it through Sonar Cube and uh, prepare some results out of that that we'll look at later. Uh, then I'm building the image, which is just doing a sourced image binary build, but you can also do a build a task in here as well. And then once that image is uh, built, then I'm essentially just tagging that image in my koi.io repository. And then we can see that we're actually going to start doing the DevOps uh, deployment here. So you can see here the uh, uh, we clone the GitOps manifests where all my GitOps manifests are. 
we update that manifest. We're doing a direct update in Git of the manifest being deployed. And then we're doing the uh, testing and the push in GitOps and then testing that and running an integration test on that. I'm going, I'll show you the integration test in a second, but I want to catch the test one when it's going through. So we can see the test one here. We're running, updating the image and then it will do a commit and push into Git. And then when that happens, we should see a little blip in our Argo CD here go right there. You can see that it's syncing because there's a change <coughs> in the manifest that correspond to this. And now that's deployed. And so once that's finished, it will actually run that integration test again. And if we look at that integration test, we can then see a variety of API tests that are being executed to make sure that what we deploy actually works as expected. Uh, automated testing is so important when you're doing uh, deployments and making sure that you have confidence that over what was created is something that's actually going to work when you actually deploy it uh, in a uh, uh, upper environment like test or production. So at this point in time, uh, I get a notification that's being sent to Slack that my build is complete and that I'm sending a release, <coughs> uh, releasing that mutex, that lease that I created earlier that I mentioned, and this pipeline is finished. But one thing you probably notice is I'm not deploying to prod. So in this pipeline here, all of the integration between the pipeline in is done directly in the sense in Argo CD in the sense that um, it updates in Git the reference to that image directly and Argo will pick it up automatically and deploy it and then that the task that I have that's doing that deployment will then just uh, wait for it. So if we go look at the uh, those that repo, go back here and look at my manifest repo which is product catalog. We can see here under um, clusters that there are some images uh, that were updated. I'll go look at the cluster in particular. You can see my dev image has been updated two minutes ago and my uh, test image was also updated two minutes ago. So this is the pipeline that's actually doing those updates and making that. So now I've got my deployment done across the um, dev and test. We're kind of ready for prod. Oh, before I do that, the other thing I should show you really quickly is I'm also running the image through an ACS scan. <laughs> and from a task perspective, it will log the scan results and then it will also do a policy check on that to see if I'm violating any policies. And you can see there's a couple of policies flagged. Now for me, I'm not uh, a believe in preventing images being deployed in lower environments because a policy check failed. Uh, the reason for that is that you're always gonna have CVEs and what you don't wanna do is necessarily block developers from getting the work done uh, just because of that CVE. Most often than not CVEs, it Lower environments not as important as higher environments, so they're obviously still very important. Environments are often not exposed to the internet; they have less ex uh, risk associated with them, etc. And I really don't want developers, you know, uh, hands for uh, a day or two while uh, the security team works out what's going on with that. So that's just how I like to operate, but obviously your mileage may vary in your organization. So we've got that pipeline, it's executed, we're ready to go. Uh, now, how do I do a de production deployment? Let's have a look at that next. So remember I said that I was sending this to Slack. So when I send this to Slack, there's a couple of different messages that get sent. For example, you can see that policy check failure gets sent um, to Slack along with a link, but we'll look at that link in a little bit later. Uh, and that link is really to ACS so that uh, a security team member or somebody can have a look at that image and understand where that failure had occurred. But I'm also getting a message here that the server pipeline is completed. I can see some of the results from that pipeline here in terms of the, the Quay image, the ACS scan and the sonar cube. It gives me the command I can execute to generate a pull request in order to create a, um, uh, a production release. But in this case, I've also simplified it and put a button in here that will essentially just do this for me. Now, <coughs> what I'm gonna do here is that Instead of deploying directly in prod, as I kind of mentioned earlier, I have a pipeline that's gonna create that pull request and deploy it into prod for me. So let me go ahead and press that button. Once I press that button, you can see that uh, my pipeline kicks off again. Now, one of the nice things about OpenShift pipelines and Tekton is it has a lot of flexibility in managing parameter bindings in terms of how the messages get sent to it. So I can use the ability to pick up this message along with the glue code and get this triggered. So this will trigger a sequence of steps in order to build that pull request for me. So instead of having a human do the pull request, I've got this pipeline that creates it for me. Uh, same as the other one, we'll have some variables that get pulled in uh, and set into results that we can consume in subsequent tasks. 
Um, then I'm just pulling out what the image digest is for the image tag that we want to push to production. Uh, cloning the manifest repo, branching it, updating the image reference to it. And then what we're going to be doing is um, creating a commit list, which we'll see in a second, which is essentially what has changed from a code perspective on this image. Are you, why am I making this PR? And then finally, we're creating that production PR in my um, Git repo. So we can see in the pipelines now that there, those two are executed. And if I go look back here at my uh, catalog, we can see now that I've got one pull request in there. So if I click on that pull request, I can then see uh, I've got one pending and it's referencing the image that I just built. And you can see in here that I've got a security checklist as well as a list of the code changes that happen so that I can understand and review this pull request before I actually uh, merge it. So in my experience, most customers are not doing continuous deployment. They're doing continuous delivery in the sense that they're always ready to deliver, but the actual deployment is controlled by a gate. And those gates typically will have uh, assets that are required to be provided in order to pass that gate. So for example, um, did you scan your image and is it free of any vulnerabilities? Um, have you done a, a code a quality analysis on the, on the code? Um, has somebody reviewed what the changes are to make sure that there's no uh, changes that are going to be impacting our user base, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got four different things that a, a user has to check, and I'm using a GitHub plugin that forces you to click these off before you can actually do the merge, right? So the merge is kind of grayed out here until I'm actually ready to do it. So if I go look at my Im Quay image vulnerabilities, we'll just go open that up. And it may not have scanned right now, but we'll see. Um, but you'll notice here that I've got a uh, lock icon against all my images <coughs> and that is in a did scan so I can click that. So I, I've got one critical vulnerability according to Quay, three high levels so I can use that as one check in terms of my security posture. But you also notice as I was alluding to earlier I've got this shield icon here which is meaning that I'm signing my images. So I'm using Tekton Chains to transparently sign my images. Uh, so as a developer I don't need to any work. I can simply just uh, have the task generate the image and Tekton a bunch of pipelines behind the scenes will automatically sign those images and in advanced cluster security policy that will ensure that those images are signed and flagged when they're not. So that's the Quay uh, check so I can go ahead and check that off. I can then go and look at my advanced cluster security and I can see the image scan results from that as well here so I can see I've got a risk priority of 11. I can see what my top CVSS score is, uh, what my posture is in terms of, you know, critical, important, moderate, what deployments are using this. You can see I've only got two deployments and that's because um, this is the ones that are deployed in my development and test namespaces, right? But you'll notice prod isn't there because I, I haven't actually pushed this image out to prod yet. Um, so, okay, I reviewed that. I'm willing to accept the, uh, the vulnerabilities that are there. So I can go ahead and check that off. Then I can go look at my sonar cube results. And here you can see from a new code perspective, there's no real change in the posture. I can also review the overall code uh, and understand where I'm at. So for example, I've got 30 code smells that SonarCube can show me a bunch of detailed information about that can be addressed by the developers and can be reviewed by uh, other uh, peers or the security team to make sure that there's nothing in there that's uh, problematic for that organization. But again, once I've reviewed that and I'm ready to go, I can go ahead and check that. And then the last thing here is I can go in and see what have I changed uh, in this push, right? You can see, so the only thing I really changed here is I bumped the version number, but obviously if I had more changes, that would appear in, the, in this log as well. Um, remember when I talked about generating a build ID, how I'm using the commit ID as part of the build ID? So that's where that idea cycles back to this because I can look at the image that's currently deployed in prod, do a difference between that image and the one in, uh, that I'm proposing to push, and understand all the code changes that are part of that image change. So that can be reviewed as well to make sure there's no impacts for the user. We'll go ahead and do that. And at this point in time, I can go ahead and merge it. I'm just gonna bring up uh, my uh, Argo CD here again, aka OpenShift GitOps. So we'll go ahead and merge it now that everything's ready to go. Merge that change. And you'll see again uh, that it will go ahead and start progressing. Here's the production one as it goes and syncs that release. Now the interesting thing here is because this activity with the pull request is all asynchronous, um, how do I test my production release to make sure that I didn't break anything? I, how do I run my automated testing? 
So I'm using a, a post sync hook to run another pipeline that can run that integration test in production and make sure that all my tests pass. And if they fail, I will get another notification again that tells me that, uh, that it failed. So that's my uh, DevSecOps uh, shift pipelines and GitOps demo. I hope you enjoy that. I'll post a link to my repo down below. Now note, because of all the external dependencies that this demo depends on, it's not really designed to be consumed by other people, i.e. you can just take my deploy in your cluster and it'll work out of the box. But you can use my code as a to how to accomplish these same goals with your own pipelines that you're working on in your organization. So thanks very much and uh, hopefully